Bass Global Ministries welcomes you to Flashback Friday. Pastors Jeff and Demetria Bass have been teaching and preaching the Word of God with clarity and simplicity for over 25 years. Now, let's flash back to one of their classic messages. My message is simply entitled, Are You Delighting in the Lord? Are you delighting in the Lord? The word delight means pleasure in something. Therefore, we should take great pleasure or delight in God and the things of God. Scripturally, we're not to have the wrong kind of delight, which is in showing display or in our own physical strength. On the other hand, the right kind of delight should be in these four things. These are the four things that you should have the right kind of delight. Number one, you should have delight in God's will. Psalm 40 verse eight says, I delight to do thy will, O my God, yea, thy law is within my heart. Number two, the second kind of delight that we should delight in is God's commandments. Uh, Psalm 112 verse 1, it reads, Praise ye the Lord. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord, listen to this, that delighteth greatly in his commandments. Amen? So, we are to delight in God's will. We are to delight in God's commandments. And number three, we are to delight in God's goodness. Uh, Nehemiah chapter nine, verse 25. And they took strong cities and a fat land and possessed houses full of goods, wells digged, vineyards and olive yards and fruit trees in abundance. So they did eat and were filled and became fat, listen to this, and delighted themselves in thy great goodness. They delighted themselves in the great goodness of the Lord. My question to you today, instead of asking you, are you delighting in the Lord? But first of all, have you recognized that the Lord has been good to you? I can say amen because the Lord has been good to me. So therefore I have no problem delighting in the greatness of God's goodness, in his great goodness. And number four, we should delight in God himself. Let's see, let's go to Isaiah chapter 58. And I'm gonna read verses 13 and 14. If thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath, from doing thy pleasure on my holy day, and call the Sabbath a delight, the holy of the Lord, honorable and shall honor him, not doing thine own ways, nor finding thine own pleasure, nor speaking thine own words, then shalt thou delight thyself in the Lord. Did you get that? All those things he says, not doing your own ways, not finding your own pleasure, not speaking your own words. Amen. We're, we're, if we're not doing those things, then we're delighting in God himself. Let me keep reading. And I will cause thee to ride upon the high places of the earth and feed thee with the heritage of Jacob, thy father. For the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. Amen. Again, that's Isaiah chapter 58, verses 13 through 14. Psalm 16, which is our scriptural text, is a psalm of is a psalm of delight, and in it we find no trials or tribulations. Matter of fact, first of all, David is simply doing a couple of things. Number one, he's simply delighting in the Lord. Psalm 16, verse 2 says, You are my Lord, my goodness is nothing apart from you. In other words, he's saying, I have no good beyond you, God. I love the way Paul elaborates on this same matter 
in the book of Romans chapter seven, verses 18 through 20. It says, and I know that nothing good lives in me that is in my sinful nature. I want to do what is right, but I can't. I want to do what is good, but I don't. I don't want to do what is wrong, but I do it anyway. But if I do what I don't want to do, I am not really the one doing wrong. It is sin living in me <laughs> that does it. That pretty much sums it up, doesn't it? Then David delights in the Lord's people. First he delighted in the Lord, then he delighted in the Lord's people. Uh, in verse three, and, the saint, and to the saints who are on the earth, they are the excellent ones in whom is all my delight. My question is, do we delight in the Lord's people? Somebody once said, to live above with saints we love will certainly be glory. To live below with saints we know, that's another story. If some of God's people have become insensitive or abrasive to you, you know what you need to do? Not be insensitive or abrasive back to them. Start delighting in the Lord. And then once you start delighting in the Lord, the Lord was, will, was so situated that next you will start delighting in his people. Amen? Come on. David also delights in God's providence. What do you mean, Pastor? Well, in verses five and six, you, O Lord, are the portion of my inheritance and my cup. You maintain my lot, he said. The lines have fallen to me in pleasant places. God, in his divine providence, knows where to draw the line. We don't, but he does. Problems arise when people don't know where his lines are because they want to keep moving the lines. Now, I need to, I need to say that again. Problems start to happen or arise when people don't know where God's lines are. What, what is his line? What is his limits? What is his, What are his standards? Where They don't know where his lines are. And you say, well, why is that? Because they want to keep moving or changing the lines. On a football field, a regulation football field is 100 yards long. At, the, at one end of the 100 yards is a goal post. At the other end is a goal post. Now, if one team or, yeah, one of the team's managers or somebody on one team went out and moved the goal post 20 yards closer, that's not fair. But not only is it not fair, but for one team, the line has been moved up closer so now instead of a hundred yard distance going down the field, they only have to go 80 yards. They move the goal line. They move the standards. And that's what we are living in uh, times today. People want to change the standards of God, but God's word is his standard. He's raised up a standard. Some people may say an engineering term, a plumb line. And people want to keep moving the line. First, they wanted to blur the lines. Now they want to move the lines or, and, and, and totally disrespect the lines or the standards. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Providence, however, God's providence is divine guidance of human destiny. It's manifested in God's ordering of the believer's life. We have to allow or we should allow God to order our life. In scripture, it talks about the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Y'all know that scripture? <laughs> but we don't want God to order our lives. And when we don't allow him to order our lives, we walk in disorder and chaos and confusion. Let me give you a scriptural example. Uh, the 75th Psalm, verses 6 and 7. For promotion cometh neither from the east, nor from the west, nor from the south. But God is the judge. He put it down one and set it, set it up another. Also, as believers, we should acknowledge God's providence in our prosperity. 
Just explain it. Your prosperity doesn't come from you. It doesn't come from your boss or man. Yeah, they may give you sign off on the raise or the increase, but promotion cometh from the Lord. Thanks for joining us on Flashback Friday. If you enjoyed this message and would like to hear more, join us this weekend online for an encouraging and life-changing message. We are Bass Global Ministries, and we're building an online community of believers who desire to get closer to Christ and grow deeper in God's Word. Visit our website at www.bassglobalministries.com. That's www.bassglobalministries.com for service times and more information. Bass Global Ministries, the place to gather, grow, and go. Be blessed.